started sputtering over the mountains. Thought I'd better put her down. Yeah, where are you heading? Well, Palm Springs, but I didn't want to take a chance. I'll take a look. A passenger, he'd like to use the restroom. Uh, where is it? It's in that building over there. you feel like a mm. cup of coffee coffee why it makes me think of every cafe and truck stop in this entire desert valley <laughs> why in the world do you say that it's all the dots in every single truck stop and cafe there's a waitress named dot <laughs> more dots than that entire painting actually <laughs> what else does it make you feel oh poor I've heard of this artist. This painting is worth more than every house I've ever owned, or ever will own, the way business is going. How long have you been a private investigator? Just long enough to get in the Palm Springs Yellow Pages. Hmm. So I chose you from your ad in the Yellow Pages. Your ad said you're retired from the Los Angeles Police Department. I expected somebody much... I joined the department when I was 21. I pulled the pin. I mean, I retired last June after 20 years of service. I want you to follow my husband. A woman problem? Yes. Hmm. Well, this is a no-fault divorce state. You don't need a PI. I don't care if my husband has one mistress or 10, but he's preparing to have a child, and I want to know why. OK. How do you know? My husband and I have separate checking accounts, and we respect each other's privacy in every way. But the last time that I was here, I noticed a monthly billing statement from the Beverly Hills Fertility Institute. Sperm bank. I had my physician make a call, but all they would say was that the client list is confidential and that the name Clive Devon is unknown to them. Tell me, um, do you and your husband still have? He had a cardiac bypass. Arterial insufficiency allows him to produce fluid, but sex... We haven't had sexual contact for five years. At least, not with each other. So you would like me to conduct a surveillance? Find out who, what, when, why, where? Just who and why. Why a child at his age? And I assume that a sperm bank involves a surrogate, otherwise why store it? $50 an hour charged against a $1,000 retainer is what I charge for surveillance work. When he goes to bed, I go to bed. If he should uh, decide to get up in the middle of the night and visit his little bake oven, I won't know about it. Mrs. Devon, what do you plan to do with the information if I'm able to get it? Oh, you don't have to worry about that. Well, if you don't tell me, I refuse to take the case. I'd be happy to pay a bonus for the results. I don't pretend that my husband and I have a close or even a normal relationship. But I have to know.
Hello. Detective Cutter? Yes. Am I disturbing you? Well, I gotta get up and puke anyway. Who the hell is this? Well, my name's Brita Burroughs. I've recently retired from LAPD and I just opened a PI business here in Palm Springs. Listen, I... lady. Yes, I'm listening. <coughs> Detective Cutter? I could call back in a half an hour. They'll be pulling a sheet over me by then. Look, lady, it ain't easy talking into a tennis shoe. Look, what the hell do you want from me this time of morning? It's one o'clock in the afternoon. I have something I'd like to discuss. Could I come over? Save your gas. Lady, I got a pair of knees that function like Yugoslavia, for which I'm about to get pensioned out of police work. Ain't about to jeopardize that moonlight for a P.I. Oh, I wouldn't jeopardize your pension. Look, I gotta go. I'm busy house-sitting. Oh, you'll feel better after you have a drink. Uh, and what have you got to lose? The furnace room in an hour. I love the place. It's about as cheerful as Gotham City. Can we get off the phone now? This has gone on longer than the Lebanese Civil War. driving a plumbing truck. He drove right through your reservation here. Now, somebody must have seen something. He assaulted a deputy sheriff. He put grease on his mouth and in his nose to keep the moist. And he put coins in his mouth. That makes the thirst less bad. You saw him? He knows about the hot sun. He's a man of the desert. Bad night, Lynn. Yeah, Wilford Bad. Did I leave here with somebody? You're having more blackouts than London in the Blitz. Don't you remember? I got this vague image in my mind of a blonde mustache. Ah, oh, yes, well, she did have a mustache. Ugly as all three witches in Macbeth. Personally, I'd rather have ants in my truss. Nice hair, though. Rather like Rita Hayworth. I ever tell you I almost got a speaking role in Gilda? Are you old enough to remember the golden age of movies? No. But my liver is. Maybe my liver remembers. Can I have a glass of your best Chardonnay, please? And uh, give Mr. Cutter another of whatever he's having. Thought you'd be older. I am. Somebody must have set your odometer back. I imagine we're about the same age. Yeah, well, I just had a checkup and I got the stool of a much younger man. Lots of Wilford's clientele are from showbiz. Failed actors mostly like Wilford himself. Mm. Seems he doubled for Ronald Reagan and Hellcats in the Navy. Shall I pour, or would my lady wish to let it breathe a bit? Just pour it, Wilfred. CPR can resuscitate the crap you serve. Tut, tut. Feeling any better now? Well, I'm not quite ready to do eyelid surgery. Look, we only got seven or eight weeks till Easter, and I gotta cover eggs this year. Think you get to the point by then? I need some confidential help from somebody at the Palm Springs PD. Some local talent? Yeah, well, I'm full of talent. I can probably blow smoke rings if I still smoke. Thanks for the drink. Leon! 
Ben. I just came from your house. Do I know you? You better remember me. Phyllis from last night. Well, if you see that lady there, that's my wife. I can't be seen with you. You said you was single. You sang to me. I got that loving feeling. God, I hate that song. Rita, wait a minute. She seems like she really cares. Yeah, she pretends like she could care less by starting a snuff film or went to Disneyland, but really, she's a great little mother. You got kids? You bastard, you told me you was childless. Poor darling little ankle biters, and they need their daddies. Brita, wait! Invited you. Get me out of here, will you? I'll at least listen to your offer. I know I've been a pain so far. You're not big enough pain to break through ether. I guess you heard I did one job for a lawyer. He was working on the defense of a cop who was being indicted for shooting a 12 year old kid. 12 years old? Oh. It was during a nighttime drug raid. Kicked the door down, wrong house. 12-year-old boy with a toilet plunger in his hand was gonna protect his mom. Split second, Jack Graves' eyes saw a guy with a gun. Squeezed the trigger once, didn't mean to. What happened to Jack Graves? Because my investigation, the DA didn't prosecute. Jack Graves got a stress pension. Lives with bad dreams. Anyway, I don't go around moonlighting for lawyers and PIs. Can you use some extra money? Yeah. Thousand bucks, if you get me the results I want. Nobody has to know about it. Well, what would I have to do? Some surveillance. Plus, uh, I need a male helping me on this one because I may need some special undercover work. This job might call for a sperm sample. Lady, you can't be that lonely. <laughs>
scared me. Next time I'll wear a cowbell. So tell me what happened, and you can leave out the wet dream. I will not sleep. Mm, so you always snore on your stakeouts, huh? So tell me what happened today. This guy is going to be harder to trace than the Basque language. How much did you say you were getting paid for this job? I didn't. You guys got a friend, young, cute, long dark hair, probably Latina. I went for a picnic today up Painted Canyon. She even brought her doggie along. It was very touching. Did you do anything else besides picnic? You didn't spread anything except peanut butter. Mm. You even fed her doggie from his very own sandwich. So where does she live? Do you know anything about her? No, I couldn't get her license number. Well, why didn't you follow her? Because you said to stay with Devin. I wish I'd have followed the guy in a baseball cap. What guy? And he picked up some guy out in Painted Canyon, drove him to downtown Palm Springs after he dropped a girlfriend off. Maybe he was just a guy that needed a lift. Well, maybe, but I don't like third parties barging into a nice, clean soap opera. And Clive Devon gave something to the guy. I couldn't see what it was. I'm calling Rhonda Devon. We're going to go meet her someplace. No, I want a drink. All that running around in the desert, I got enough sand in my shoes to toilet train a thousand cats. <laughs> Imagine it, a young Mexican woman? Maybe Mexican. Why would Clive want to have a baby with a Mexican woman? Why not? I wouldn't mind. And for starters, there's Vicky Carr and Linda Ronstadt. Then there's Millie Valdez, who owns a new car dealership down in India. And the woman, the dog, none of it means anything to you, huh? I hope I don't get an allergic reaction to her dog's dander. How about the guy in the baseball cap, the husky Latino? Your husband gave something to the guy. My husband would pick up any stray. He's always been like that. He gives handouts to every beggar in the street. He's like a child, really. He's never had to work for anything in his life. He doesn't understand how vile people can be. And you're still not ready to confront him with it? You just ask. I will not question him. He's never questioned me, never. Have you been married before? Twice. Has he? No. He lived with his mother until well into middle age. He said I was his first and only love. Now, what if you went to Clive Devon's urologist as a patient who wanted to use a sperm bank? What if he wanted a sample? Well, you give it to him. I ain't giving my polywogs to no stranger. That's humiliating. Go home. I don't want you to fall asleep on your stakeout tomorrow. There's one little sip of sherry to help me sleep. You know, that's the most insincere smile this town has seen since Tammy Faye Baker moved out. This room is a hotbed of intrigue. When the temperature rises, this whole joint goes on a rampage. Yeah, sort of like a yeast infection. Stick around. This is one of those nights. Are you Detective Lynn Cutter, Palm Springs PD? My name's Nelson Harim. Harim? Sure, I heard of you. You're the one they call Dirty Harim because you're so enthusiastic about police work. Can I get a beer over here, please? I uh, called Palm Springs uh, PD to get your telephone number, and they said you were out on medical leave. An officer told me everyone knows where to find you after 9 o'clock. Day or night. Huh? Never mind. So what's up? I'm working on something unofficially, Detective Cutter. Call me Lynn. I'm younger than I look. Everybody in here is. I took down your license number along with the number of every car I saw in Painted Canyon today. I already checked out three others. What were you doing down there? What were you doing down there? You're going to have to read me my rights where you took that approach, Nelson. Sorry, Len. I'm trying to catch a guy who beat up the deputy down at the airport. You must have heard something about it on the news. Anyways, I think the guy's holed up in one of those canyons. I mean, he was last seen going across the desert headed in that direction. I can't believe he'd go to all this trouble because I drove through the canyon. 
Well, there's more. Some hikers in an RV told me that they saw a man and a woman go into the canyon in a Range Rover, but came out with a second man. So, either they picked you up, or... Or what? Or maybe they picked up him, the fugitive. Nah, couldn't be. What, Lynn? You saw something. Hey, hey, it's not like I found Jimmy Hoffa's pinky ring in Ivana Trump's hair. It's just a coincidence is all. Latino, medium height, kind of a husky build, bald, big mustache, 35, 40 years old, carried a flight bag. You saw him, didn't you? Chill out, Nelson. I saw a husky Latino, yeah. But he was wearing a blue baseball cap, so I don't know if he was bald. Anyway, what are you doing down there? Well, you know, I want to make a name for myself. I want to get transferred up to Palm Springs where there's lights and there's action, there's shade. Shade? Yeah, it's too hot and barren down in my end of the desert. I mean, my shoe shine melts every afternoon. The leather on my Sam Brown sweats like it's still alive. I mean, in Palm Springs, you've got trees and tall buildings and spas and... Shade? Shade. Tell me, Nelson. What color was the flight bag this guy carrying? Red. It was red. What are you looking for? You're the detective. Clues, I guess. No, Nelson, it's kind of weird hanging around a public telephone unless you're from the planet Krypton. One thing I can tell you about this guy is he's probably from Mexico. Really? I ran back here looking for him. I found these. I was going to leave them as a tip for Wilford just to hear him complain. Lynn, only two of these are Mexican. This coin, this is from Spain. This is a 10 peseta coin. Yeah, well, I don't have my jeweler's loop handy, but I'll take your word for it. You know what this might mean? He's an international smuggler. He came here from Spain by way of Mexico. Or he got change in a Mexican border saloon. Those guys are always giving you coins from travelers in transit. Look at this. Don't tell me, another clue. There's a page missing, with the motel listings A through C. Yeah, there's likely to be 30 or 40 on the page if this is even the right guy. All right, listen. I need the address of your PI friend that you're working for, and I need to see you tomorrow. No, no. no. Lynn, you got to help me on this. Look, Nelson, I'm all through with your fugitive. Otherwise, I'm going to have to turn over all the information I have to the sheriff's detectives. And they're probably going to want to question you as to why, when you're supposedly waiting on a medical pension, you're out there moonlighting for a private eye. The guy's a foreigner. Husky. Bald. Resourceful. Just flew in from a foreign country. Wonder if he's got a big pink birthmark on his forehead. I think this is your type. Why not take two? One for day, one for night. Will you be paying with a credit card? show up on time? Nelson Harim's as predictable as a summer heat rash. This fugitive business can't go anywhere. Make him see. You couldn't see with a Hubble space telescope. He's obsessive compulsive on another subject. How about 50 bucks? Hmm. Doesn't that mansion of yours have a pantry? Yeah, and I ate everything in it except the cat food, which ain't my brand. How about 20? All right. Against your fee? If you get results. You remind me of my first ex-wife. Dare I ask why? She always used to like to make me sweat before she'd figuratively pump a few slugs into me. Of course, she always used to aim for my fun zone, too. Hmm. Hello, Ms. Burroughs. I appreciate borrowing went. We've only got 37 hotels and motels to check out. 
I'll get him back to you in a couple of days after we catch a fugitive. Pleased to meet you, Nelson. <laughs> Wait, guess what? You know that Spanish coin? I got a theory. The fugitive, he's from Algeria, maybe Morocco. That's right near Spain, Ms. Burroughs. I know. I saw Casablanca. Nelson, I've run more background and credit checks on Clive Devon than they do when they're searching for a new pope. Why would Clive Devon want to do business with a smuggler, hmm? I've got that figured out. The fugitive is a Middle Eastern terrorist. Nelson, there's a drink machine downstairs. I'll buy if you go down and get us a couple of sodas. My left knee is so swollen you wouldn't know it from Marlon Brando. I'll buy. He's adorable. I'd like to take him to the circus or buy him some jelly beans. But if he tells the sheriff that he saw you in Painted Canyon and they interview Clive Devon, my whole investigation is blown. It beat me out of 5,000. Oh, you little dickens. And here I am, risking my butt and my pension for a measly thousand bucks. This whole thing is slipping away from me. Deal with Nelson. Don't let him mess up my arrangement with Rhonda Devon. I'll give you an extra $500. Nelson, before you force me to help you search for a terrorist, smuggler, assassin in motels that begin with A, B, or C, tell me, why is your fugitive terrorizing in Palm Springs? Well, President Gerald Ford lives here. <coughs> He's not terrorizable. If it wasn't for Watergate, he'd be a retired congressman beaming people at the Grand Rapids Municipal Golf Course. Look, maybe my camera could stay on a case till the end, but I've got a business to run. Somebody has got to tail Clive Devon for me. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Burroughs, but my case is urgent. Ms. Burroughs, remember that retired cop I told you about, Jack Graves? The one that shot the kid? You could use a job. Let's go see him. Hey, Lynn. Hi, Jack. What a surprise. This is Breed of Burroughs, new PI in town, recently retired from LAPD. Hi. Come on in. You want something cool to drink? No, I don't know, thanks. Have a seat. Breed's got a job for you. Doesn't pay much, but it'll give you something to do. Uh, I don't know. I, I really have to take care of a few things around here. Oh, come on, Jack. This is a job that needs to be done. I can't do it. <laughs> OK, Lynn. What'd you do to your hand? Oh, burned it on the stove. <laughs> Getting old and clumsy, I guess. <laughs> you be tailing a guy named Clive Devon. That was a decent thing you did for Jack Graves. I had to get somebody to tail Clive Devon. What do you make of that accident with his hand? Same as you. He also accidentally cut his hand slicing onions. Took about 35 stitches. <sighs> the guy's carrying a lot of guilt. That man needs psychiatric help. The man needs body armor. He's alone too much. It's not good to be alone all the time in this world. Dalton, it's you. Yeah, it's me. It's me, all right. So, uh, you got me again. It is definitely me. This is Carlton the Confessor. 
Every cop in town knows Carlton. I done it. I done it. Confess later, Carlton. First, you check anybody in here yesterday or today who was dark, husky, bald, had an accent and a mustache. Pretty grungy looking like he'd been sleeping out with the coyotes all night. Grungy? No. Mm -mm. I checked in six people in the last two days. Four women, two men. The women wore tank tops. Very well groomed. Well, I guess we better scratch this one. What's this? Uh, you were uh, checking out what here? You're checking out, let's see. You are checking out modeling agencies, money order services, monuments and memorials. Hmm. Fuckoes? I done them all, guys. I done them. Carlton used to confess to anything for riding a police car and some toll house cookies. I don't know. Might have been all that sugar wrecked his brain. Did you feel the need to babysit us tonight, or are you just in it for the thrills and chills of motel crawling? I'm here to keep you moving and out of the furnace room. The sooner you get out of this fugitive hunt, the sooner we make some money, remember? Uh, uh, for a guy that might have checked in yesterday afternoon, husky, mustache, 40, probably Latino. Or from the Middle East. Like Kansas. That's the Middle West. He's bald, but he might be wearing a blue baseball cap or some other kind of hat. Sounds like Vega in uh, 111. He wears a hat. Could be bald. Please, Nelson. This guy's probably just some vacation and snowbird from Walla Walla. Let's not kill him right away. Aren't you two packing a piece? No. Mine's in my purse. My purse is in the car. I have an extra one on my boot. Uh. You know, when I first became a cop, nobody needed two hands to hold one little gun. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, we're looking for a friend of ours. You got the wrong room. That's my room. Three, you got a wasp on your hat. He's got more hair than Willie Nelson. Yeah, he's gone. Man, I can spot a nasty wasp faster than a defamation league. I think it's time to go home. Yeah, can I help you? Please, uh, I'm looking for a gravestone, just like the one that was made for a lady who died last September. Did we do it? I think so. I've already uh, been to the other two companies who do gravestones, and they said you do beautiful custom-made work. What'd it look like? A marble? Granite? What? <sighs> I'm not sure. Uh, but I can tell you that it had orchids carved on it. One on each side of the woman's name? Uh, single plot, 16 by 28? You did it. Only time I ever got a call for orchids. Please, I must look at the stone with my own eyes to make sure it's exactly like the one I want for my dear uh, Please, can you tell me the name of the person who ordered the orchid stone? Uh, you'll have to ask Martha. I just do the cutting and engraving. I can't remember no names. Well, have a seat in her office. She should be back in 20 minutes. Thank you. files? I said, what are you doing? You put those invoices back, can you hear me? Mike, help! Help! Hey, what are you...
Well, what they're doing here? Look at the steel tombstones, the steel swimming pool. Tombstones? Nelson! Yeah, Remember what Carlton the Confessor said about Yellow Pages, the M's? It wasn't a motel that the fugitive was looking for. He was looking for memorials and markers, tombstones. The invoice shows the name of the deceased, what was wanted on the stone, who ordered the job, and the name of the mortuary. I wish I could remember the name on the orchid stone, but I can't. Mike, whenever you do like a beautiful custom job, something you're really proud of, don't you ever take a picture of it? Something to show the other customers? But the boss does. Orchids, orchids. There it is, Lugo. It was a beautiful job. I'll call the cemetery and find out who the funeral director was. And many's the time we heard the lovely tenor, Danny O'Doone, leading the choir during his years of happy retirement right here in our parish. Now, Danny came from a place called Ireland, which, uh, as everybody knows, is the best place in the world. And the reason I know that is because uh, I'm from there myself. And Would you addition, care to sign the guest book for the O'Doone family? And it's Are you Mr. Ford, who's a man oh, no. William He's down the hall in his office. So now I'm going to inflict on you, uh, if you don't mind, a little poem by Yeats, which is called In a Stream. Mr. Lieberman, it's urgent that we find the next of kin of a Maria Magdalena Lugo, who died last September. Lugo. Let me see him. Ah, yes, that would be Mr. John Lugo. Wanted the very best for his darling mother, as I recall. I have his phone number and his address in Palm Springs. That's about all I know. May I? Mm -hmm. They call those things coffin nails. Yes. And I've fired every employee in this establishment who's ever used that one. Coffin nails. That was funny, Nelson. Damn, I forgot my glasses. Ah, you've returned. You know, I was just telling this gentleman that the police were trying. Oh, oh. Oh. Ah. Oh. finest rolling around in Dracula's bed tonight. How closely did that mortician see your badge tonight, Eddie? Well, like most people, he hardly glanced at it. I mean, for all that guy knows, Link could be a Mountie or a Texas Ranger. I think it's time Nelson took his information to the Sheriff's Department, leaving out a few details like wrecking a mortuary, etc. That guy put me in a brass-handled sedan before my time. We gotta talk to Clive Devon now, and we gotta figure out what his connection is with the fugitive. We what? That'll blow our deal with his wife. We gotta do it. And we gotta contact John Lugo. So now it's John Lugo instead of Clive Devon, huh? I know I haven't helped out on the Devon case, but it isn't because I'm not trying. 
You can't Welsh on our deal. Oh, don't worry. I'll get paid. Even if it's Jack Graves who comes up with our answer. Anybody, Otis? <laughs> yes, sir. Put up it there, please. Looks like that dog's a mascot around right here. Oh, Malcolm? Yeah, old Clyde's been bringing him in here ever since he's just a little old puppy. The old gent with him. I think I played golf with him one time, but I can't remember his name. Well, that's Doc Morton. He's a veterinarian around here. Takes care of all the animals. Hell, he even took care of my old shoulder one time and I dislocated it. That man sure loves his dog. <laughs> you know, you never would guess this, but old Clive there, he's a rich man. Lives up there in Palm Springs in this big old house, they say. He's a pretty good fella, too. Beautiful dog. Thanks. You got an empty chair. Can I share your table with you and buy you gentlemen a drink? Sure. Now yeah, make yourself comfortable. Jack Graves. Doc Morton. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi, Clyde. Hi. Jack Graves. This is Malcolm. Beautiful. <laughs> So, Nelson, what'd you get for Christmas? From who? From whoever. Well, from my sister, I got a cowboy hat. From my mom and dad, I got one of those do-it-yourself burglar alarm systems for my apartment. How much do a good pair of cowboy boots cost, huh? Well, I admire a certain pair of peanut brittle lizard boots with a red-eyed snake on the side, but I can't afford them. I'm 350 bucks. Tell you what. If you promise not to screw up my deal before we crack our case, I'll, I'll get you those boots. Wait a second. You'll buy me those boots? Yeah. All right. I'll see you guys later. How about a nightcap? Ever been to the top of the tram? Date a lot of guys? <laughs> Just about none. I've been too busy getting my business going. Divorced? Just once. One kid. You're over two? Yeah. My first wife was a kid, emotionally. She was a peach compared to number two. My daughter's a freshman at Stanford. Yeah. Pretty expensive supporting a freshman. They say sophomores cost even more. <laughs> I always thought I could do a decent job raising a kid. I'm not the judgmental type. Hmm. I had no idea this was so steep. Almost straight up. Ah. So the mountain's two miles high. The desert sky. Like bushels of diamonds. Scotch and an Irish coffee. 
Put a double shot Irish whiskey in that coffee, will you? You aware it can hit you hard at this elevation? You can only handle about half of what you normally drink. Ladies, a bartender by trade has got a big tolerance level. Double shot, please. Such gallantry will make me flutter my eyelashes. I'm not wearing them tonight. <laughs> oh, thanks, Dot. My name's Bonnie. Oh, not Dot? Dot works days. Oh, that's a relief. What was that all about? Private joke. No, between you and yourself? <laughs> well, I'll bet you're glad you're here. Otherwise, you'd be bored as hell. Bottoms up. You know, Nelson is right about one thing. We've got to confront Clive Devon and find out if he knows anything about the fugitive. For example, what did Devon give to the guy? Drugs. Fugitive's got to be involved in drugs. Can you imagine Clive Devon being involved in drug smuggling? Yeah, that's too much for me. I'll take a nice, clean homicide case every time. Tram. I've already had four. <laughs> three, it was three. <laughs> All that Irish coffee, I won't sleep a wink. Uh, it's decaf. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you about this female sergeant I used to work for? One day the guys taped a porn movie poster at the top of her patrol car. And all the helicopters were all doing flyovers, and she didn't know what to think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Macho crap. You know, this is the typical kind of thing that female cops have had to put up with from the beginning of time. That stuff. Yeah, that's what I've been thinking. Well, Mike Rennes sure giving you some buffed up calves. What's a lot of buffed up calves? <laughs> you like mustaches? I hate mustaches. <laughs> Half the LAPD has them. Even the women? <laughs> Macho crap. <laughs> I've been thinking about shaving mine off. About country music, you like country music? Not especially. Why? Old Nelson's got me listening to it. It's all about guys that hang around in bars, lonely, unhappy guys. Macho guys. Sappy, macho guys. I think it's time to go home. Yes. I feel, oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you like my temporary digs? Huh? <laughs> Never mind.
sneaky, depraved swine. Oh. I'll kill you. You, you, rotten sleaze. Hey. Rita, whatever's bothering you, I'm sure we can talk about it. Ow. Rita, you don't have that gun in your purse, do you? Rita, don't force me to call 911. Look, Rita, I think I understand why you're mad at me. But honest, I was drunk. You are the most vile, evil, horrible human being I have ever known. I ain't that bad. You raped me. What? Date rape. I'm going to sue you, you filthy, perverted creep. You know the date rape from dandruff. The only reason I put you to bed is because you were drunk. Hell, I was drunk too, or I'd have noticed I put you in the wrong bed. How could you do that to another human being? You want to know what I did? I kissed your freckle, that's all. Then I passed out. You kissed what? Your freckle. Right down by the side of your mouth. I've had this urge to kiss that freckle since the first day I laid eyes on you. Oh, God, I hate this bed. I hate this house. It's lonely. I'm lonely. You're lonely. I'm not lonely, you animal. And even if I were, it would not give you the right to... What, to kiss your freckle? You know what? I think I got in two kisses before I crashed. You want to give me a sobriety test? I couldn't walk a line if you painted it with a push broom. So you just take a woman's clothes off and you slobber all over her and then you degrade her and then that's all right, you foul, slithering vermin. <sighs> in the second place, I didn't take your clothes off. But you ain't gonna believe me, so why don't you just get your gun and shoot me and get it over with? Yes, I mean, I think I will, you sniveling, debauched, low-life Bucket of dog vomit. Where's that purse? Where's that damn purse? Oh. 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 Get in the bathroom real quick. Oh. Oh. Making us some coffee, okay? If you say anything about this night, I will sue you. Sue me? Look, Brita, I ain't that weird. My entertainment consists of hanging around with those old coupon clippers at the furnace room. So how depraved can I be? We will finish our case. I will honor our deal. And then I want you to never, ever cross my path again, okay? I didn't do anything so awful. I mean, what do you want from a guy before he brings you home? His old handcuff key on a gold chain or what? Lynn, listen to this. Police are baffled by a violent fight between two men that interrupted a service at Lieberman Brothers Mortuary. One man claimed to be a police officer, but police spokesmen believe that his badge was bogus. <laughs> I guess you'll be buying a scrapbook. Something happened between you and Breda last night? Nothing a person your age would understand. Want to listen to my new country tape? It's probably about a guy whose girlfriend beats the hell out of him and then threatens to call a lawyer. What can I do for you? You John Lugo? 
No, but this is his home. Can I ask your name? Sure. Vino Sierras. Mr. Lugos is playing in the golf tournament this week. Is this about the thing in the mortuary? Well, you know about that, do you? Sergeant Feeney from Palm Spring PD phoned this morning. He wanted to see if Mr. Lugo could shed some light. But Mr. Lugo has no idea why those two guys were looking for him. You mean a little nervous being out on a golf course? <laughs> That's what the sergeant asked. But Mr. Lugo said that he's lived a long life and that the only thing that he would like is to break 80 in the golf course. John Lugo ain't afraid of nothing. Why do you think somebody's looking for him? I just take care of the property and drive Mr. Lugo wherever he wants to go. Now, we're anxious to be of help any way we can. As the old actors in the furnace room would say, that smile is about as genuine as an agent's kiss. but I want you and Lynn to satisfy me about the fugitive and Clive Devon. Well, what were you doing in Painted Canyon, Mr. Devon? Just having a picnic with Blanca's daughter, Esther. Blanca's my housekeeper. That's uh, Esther, out in the pool. And why did the man need a ride? He said he'd spent the night camping, but his truck broke down. He seemed delighted when I told him I was driving to Palm Springs. He asked me to drop him off in the center of town, and I did. Did the man have an accent? Yes, he was from Mexico. But he spoke beautiful English. More grammatical than most Americans. <laughs> yeah, even Malcolm liked him. And he's a very good judge of character. Malcolm? Yeah, that's Malcolm out by the pool. The dog. Well, uh, Esther's dog. I'm afraid my wife's terribly allergic to animals of all kinds. Well, we've taken up enough of your time, Mr. Devon. I'd, uh, I'd like to offer an opinion. He couldn't have done anything violent, that man. He talked about the desert a lot. Said his grandfather had a home out on the Sonora Desert. He used to go there as often as he could. Ah, he had a very gentle way about him. Mr. Devon, you gave something to the man. What was it? Well, he seemed so lost and forlorn. I gave him a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> Leaving some water for the coyotes. What happened to your hand? Never mind me. Tell me about Clive Devon in the future. The guy sold him some bill of goods about his truck breaking down. Clive Devon gave him a ride, that's all. You agree, Brita? Well, yeah, Clive Devon's about as sinister as a blueberry muffin. That was my impression after meeting him, but I had to be sure about the future to think. You met Clive Devon? We had supper together at a cowboy joint up in Desert Hot Springs. I even met the doctor who took the sperm sample. You met his doctor? Malcolm's doctor. The sample belongs to the dog? Clive found Malcolm in the desert when he was a puppy five years ago. I don't get it. It's a very simple case. We made it complicated. Malcolm's got an enlarged heart. Clive's determined to replicate Malcolm because he simply cannot accommodate the idea that Malcolm's soon going to leave him forever. Clive Devon's a very lonely man. He wants to replicate a dog. 
There's no proper sperm bank for animals, so Doc Morton took the sample, froze it, and sent it to a real sperm bank in Beverly Hills under the name of Malcolm Devinson with Clive's social security number. So he's owned this dog for five years and Rhonda Devon doesn't even know about it. When Rhonda Devon comes to Palm Springs, the maid's daughter takes Malcolm to her home in India. Well, I guess I just have to sit Rhonda Devon down and tell her this whole thing is about puppy love. I wish you wouldn't. Well, she's my client. She's paying me. Us. You don't owe me anything, Brita. She wouldn't understand Clive's need. She wouldn't understand. Hell, I don't even understand. You could tell Rhonda Devon that Clive's urologist botched up the handling of a specimen at his last exam. That is, routine biopsy went to the fertility clinic and a sperm sample from someone else went to the lab to be biopsied and that the billing went to the wrong parties. She'll want to believe it was all a mix-up. I can't tell a false story to my client and ask her for money. I could lose my license. I could get sued. Then don't take her money. If anybody ever finds out she gave her a false story, the refusal of payment will mitigate the thing. You didn't say whether you were willing to give up your piece of it. Or did I miss that? Yeah, I guess I'm willing. Me and Donald Trump got too many problems as it is. <laughs> Am I the only one that's crazy around here? Somebody tell me. Unconditional love. If you were about to lose it, wouldn't you get crazy notions? It's got to be the golf tournament. Something's going to happen to Lugo. All right, one of us will cover Lugo's house, and the other will cover the golf tournament. And remember, we're still not positive, Nelson. OK, I'll cover the golf tournament. Glenn Campbell's playing. If I don't spot the fugitive, at least I can you know, get Glenn's autograph. If you spot him, you simply call in the cops, Nelson. You understand? Sure, Len. Oh, heck. John Lugo's not paired up with Glenn Campbell. Who's the pro in there, Forson? It's not Arnold Palmer, either. Just some golf guy named Jim. So are you going to be able to recognize your fugitive when he's all done up in his golfing togs? I think I'll recognize him. Maybe. You're packing a gun? <laughs> you don't want to know where. So I'm wearing these pants that are so baggy in the crotch. Well, listen, be careful of a premature discharge. Well, according to this sheet, they follow Lee Trevino's foursome. So this must be them. Does it say if Clint Eastwood is playing this year? Yeah, that's got to be John Logan. Yeah. <clears throat> Boy, I couldn't break 80 in a pitching pipe. No, he seems safe enough. I don't imagine any assassin is going to try to get him at this tournament. I don't like the idea of Lynn being alone if the fugitive tries to get to John Lugo's house. Do you all take some kind of a Masonic secret oath or something? Who? Men. Clive Devon, he's worried about the fugitive because he's, he's kind of gentle. And, and Jack Graves, he's worried about Clive Devon because Devon's lonely. And Lynn's worried about you and you're worried about Lynn. And nobody in this entire world is worried about me. Well, don't you know why, Brita? That's because you're such a capable, independent person. Mm. Now, you take the rest of us. Let's face it, we're more... If you say vulnerable, I'll we'll wrap you in the mouth. OK, I won't. All right, so let's start scanning the crowd for a dark, husky, bald guy who's capable and independent, as I am. Instead of arresting him, I ought to marry the guy. I'm hungry. You want a hot dog?
Excuse me, mister. I'd like to... Damn. <laughs> Now, this pickpocket's been going through the crowd like dysentery. It's a good job, mister. You're a cop? Four hours a day. Well, I know Mr. Hope. He'll say this pickpocket ended up with a real bad lie. I can't wait for my folks to see my picture with Bob Hope. You realize we haven't the faintest idea what this guy wants with John Lugo? Maybe he'll make his move tonight at the party. I heard that Lugo's inviting a couple of hundred people. You know, I wouldn't mind going just to see how rich people party. You can bet Lugo will have plenty of security. Could get us in. Nelson could do his thing, jump on everybody that's bald. Probably come up with a couple of jewel thieves and Sean Connery. <laughs> Um, anybody want another drink? I'm buying. I got a double. And that kid makes me feel my age. I'm around him, I feel about as up to minute as polyester. I got a birthday coming in a couple of weeks. You'll understand if I don't want to come to the party. I've already attended one of your parties. <laughs> After I'm with Palm Springs PD, I sure hope I get to see you and Brita once in a while. Me and Brita? Together? Yeah. The way I see it, you've got life-threatening feelings for her. I'd say it's love. Uh, I'm in love with Brita, and Clive Devin, he's in love with Malcolm, and Malcolm's probably in love with some Airedale. Nobody's lucky in love. I'm in this damn town. Tell Mr. Sierra that Mr. Lugo wants him. Serving the patio. Good evening. I didn't know we had police officers supplementing our security people. Glad to have you. Good looking guy. Striking hair. Sure, you feel like a tango dance with a hair like a skunk. 
I like clean shaven, slim guys. I wonder if there's any pork left. <laughs> Do you know Mr. Serra? No. Mr. Lugo's man with a white stripe in his hair. Tell him there's a lady in the master bedroom who's had too much to drink. He must come at once. What are you doing? I told Henry. I didn't want his men serving drinks in here. I'm sorry, sir, but the lady told me to bring them. She's in there. Hello? Hey. Hey, man. If you cry out, if you try to run, I'll shoot you. Now sit down. Sit down. You're the guy that wrecked the mortuary. If your address had been on the invoice, I would not have had to go to the mortuary where that policeman almost got me. What policeman? What invoice? Day 13 of September last year, you arranged for 10 kilos of cocaine to be delivered from Mexicali to Los Angeles. You were, how they say, middleman. Your couriers were interrupted by a Mexican police officer. They were able to overpower that policeman. They telephoned you, and you told them what to do. Strangling is a cruel way to die. Two of your couriers were later shot at the border, but one was captured. And before he died during interrogation, he told all he knew, believe me. The courier told how the telephone voice in Palm Springs said, I just ordered a tombstone guard with orchids for an old dead woman. I can order another one for the cop. What is his favorite flower? That little joke. Perhaps cocaine makes a man forget what he says. What do you want? The policeman's name was Javier Rosas. He was a good man. He had four children. And he played with my children. And now his wife is alone. You are a cop. A Mexican cop. I am honored to serve with the Judicial del Estado, the state police of Baja. I was a friend and comrade of Javier Rosas. The others have chosen me for this mission. It's a mistake. It's wrong. It was Mr. Lugo. It was John Lugo's voice you heard on the phone. He would not refer to his mother as an old dead woman. An invoice from the Tombstone Company said that the stone was ordered by Mr. Sierra for Mr. Lugo. It's a mistake. It's all a mistake. It was all we had. The tombstone and orchids. But in Mexico, we do not expect much. We learn to work with very little in so many ways. Arrest me, then. Arrest me! Prove nothing in your court. I have no wish to torment you, Mr. Sierra. But I had to be sure about you. And now I am. I can get lots of money. More money than you've ever seen. It.
never know. That's the hell of it. I'll never know. Well, what else could it be but a drug deal gone sour? Bino Sarah burned somebody, and he's getting paid back. Why? <sighs> what well, has all the earmarks of a drug payback? Is that what I mean? I mean, why didn't this guy shoot me? Why didn't he cut my throat? Why? You think I'll look good in the Palm Springs uniform? My knees need a drink. You want to join me? Uh, maybe we could celebrate the end of our uh, partnership. I enjoyed myself most of the time. <laughs> Aren't you ever going to forget about the other night? It's forgotten. You know, I've been thinking maybe after I get my retirement, I could help you with a case once in a while. I'm a pretty good detective, right? Yes, you are. But I don't think that would be a good idea. Not that hard to take? Actually, you're smart and funny. And you're pretty nice to be with, sometimes. You know, this is none of my business, but you don't have to end up a furnace room drunk. Or like Jack Graves. Yep. <clears throat> Are we finished? Mm. As a team, I mean. I never did tell you. You've got pretty nice buns.
Well, what do you think? Thought it was my first retirement check. Pretty decent bike. Thanks. Goon says it won't hurt my knees if I don't try climbing any mountains. I'm gonna have to get rid of this razor blade they call a seat, though. It's a really nice bike. Keep your scotch in that bottle. I haven't had a drink in 29 days, 18 hours, and 15 minutes. Hmm. Thought you were gonna shave your mustache off. I did shave it off. Then I remembered why I grew it in the first place, so I grew it back again. Macho crap. That's it. So what's it feel like, quitting drinking? Yeah, it's easy. Just gotta find a lot of substitute activities to occupy your mind. Me, I've been eating a lot of live lizards. Got any live lizards under your house? Wanna go for a bike ride? I don't think so. I already rode this morning. It's your age. You can't work out in the morning and in the afternoon. Women can't take too much physical activity. I understand. Yeah.